This is Faith Encouraged with Father Barnabas Powell. Homilies designed to help you live a purposeful and faith-filled life in Jesus Christ. Here's Father Barnabas. The great uh, English author, George MacDonald, once said, The one primary principle of hell is, I am my own. The one primary principle of hell is, I am my own. When I was in seminary, I had a uh, professor. I won't call his name in case I misquote him. That's just, is that okay? Is that all right? But anyway, I remember he was teaching us liturgical theology. And you've got to understand something about the Orthodox Christian faith. The Orthodox Christian faith is very specific about how she understands what the church is and who the church is. The church is the body of Jesus Christ. The hand cannot say to the eye, I have no need of you. The church is the body of Christ. As there is one Jesus Christ, so there is one church. Period. Full stop. End of discussion. Father, that confuses me. Okay. Father, that bothers me. All right. That's fine. Father, I don't know what to make of that. Okay. You're not going to fix me? <laughs> no, I'm not. Wrestle. Won't kill you. Or maybe it will. I don't know. So the church is one. We confess it in the creed. The church is one holy Catholic and apostolic church. That's the church. But the fathers continually emphasize this truth. No one goes to heaven alone. But everyone goes to hell alone. I am my own is the principle of hell. So this professor of mine was making fun of a very pious custom in my opinion. I like this a lot actually. But in Greece and in other Orthodox countries, they have what, is, what can only be described as these chapels. They're, they're full structures, but you can only, there's only room inside the structure for one person. And they're all over the place. Greece, Romania, uh, Bulgaria, different places. They're all over the place. And they look like little churches. They've got the little, they've got the little spires on top and the, and the three-barred cross. And there's an iconostas and an altar inside. And, but there's only one room for one person. And you know what he used to call those things? It's not nice. It's true, but it's not nice. He said, those are icons of hell. And the reason why he said that was, it's not natural for Christians to experience prayer, worship, life by themselves. That's not the church. The church is meant to be a community of persons committed to doing the hard work of communion and rubbing shoulders sometimes with people they don't like. That's the church. But the idea of hell, the icon of hell, the principle that is at work in hell is I am my own. And I can't say that without thinking about our modern society today where it seems like we're constantly hearing about this group demanding their rights. I want my rights. I want my rights. You've heard me tell, me, tell you this story a thousand times before, but it's so good I'm going to tell it again. A man comes to my office and wants to uh, leave his family. And he says to me, Father, don't I deserve to be happy? Let me preface my re response by telling you this did not go well with this man. <laughs> I looked at him in the face and I said, no, you don't deserve to be happy. You deserve to be good. Happiness is a byproduct of righteousness. It is never a goal. Ever. But the individualistic and, uh, and the idea that I am supposed to demand my rights and he who dies with the most toys wins and demanding that, uh, that I have what I deserve... Folks, don't pray for what you deserve, for heaven's sake. Be smarter than that. Don't waste your life worrying about making sure you have your rights. That's dumb. Quit it. Stop it now. You're making your life and everybody around you miserable. Stop it. The principle of hell is I am my own. And so when somebody says to me, I identify as a kumquat, 
I have to scratch my head and wonder, what's wrong with you? Do you not realize you are creating a hell only fitting one person? The modern confusion that we have today, brothers and sisters, is systemic of the spiritual illness that exists in all of us because we have never wrestled what it meant to be church. We hide from it. We pretend we can design it on our own. We pretend we can dress it up so that it is, I have no idea what this word means, relevant? Are you serious? The last thing I need for the church to be is relevant. I don't care if the church is relevant or modern or if it fits everybody's ideas of things. Sorry, gang. That's not what I'm interested in. I need timeless. I don't need relevant. Relevant reinforces I am my own. Relevant reinforces what I used to call, you guys don't remember this commercial, Burger King commercial. Hold the pickles, hold the lettuce, special orders don't upset us. All we ask is that you let us serve it your way. We treat the faith that way. Well, wait a second, Father, I didn't, I never forget I had a lady early on, not, not recently. Thank you, Jesus. Early on, when I was a priest here, so the lady came up to me, she said, Father, I didn't enjoy the service at all. I said, well, great news, we didn't do it for you. There's an audience of one in this house, and he sits on the throne of heaven. You all have your part to play. Whether you do it or not, it's your business. But if you're ever going to experience the church as church, it is going to have to be as you abandon the self-centered, psychotic, narcissistic notion that the church is to design herself to make you happy. It doesn't exist that way. For instance, today in our gospel lesson, Jesus gives us some powerful... This is not a fun story, gang. This is not a fun story. A man has a vineyard. He sets it out to tenants. And he, when, it, when it comes time for the fruit to come in, he expects the tenants to give him the fruit. And he sends his servants to get it. And what they do, they beat them up and they kill them. So we got violence. We got murder. It gets worse. And thievery. He sends another group of servants. They do the same thing to them. And, they, and then he says, well, they, I'll send them my son. By the way, who do you think Jesus is talking to here? He's talking to the religious people of his day. I'll send them my son. They'll respect my son. But what do they do to the son? Because their hearts are gripped by, I am my own. Let's kill the son, the, the, the son and we'll get his inheritance. You're talking about delusion. Folks, when you are gripped by this foolish notion that, you're, that life is supposed to design itself around you, and you do not have any kind of responsibility at all to discover the very purpose of why you exist, when you are gripped by the delusion that I, and my, I am my own, or me, myself, and I, or what was it one of the, one of the great uh, 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 the poets said? No man is an island, and yet that's the way we treat each other and ourselves. We even get married to be happy. You goofballs. What in God's name are you doing getting married to be happy for? That's the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. But look what happens. So I stop being happy and, well, let's break up because we're not happy anymore. We have friends that way. But when the principle of your life is, I am my own, everyone exists to service your needs. That is not the church of Jesus Christ. The church of Jesus Christ, as she has been constituted since the day of Pentecost, is a community of people. That is the reason why the Apostle Paul said, we who are many, look at this, we who are many. By the way, I thought it was a holiday weekend. What are you people doing in church, for heaven's sake? We who are many. Eat from one loaf and drink from one cup. What do you think that is? Just fantasy? No. The nature of the church is to destroy those things in your life that keep you isolated from Jesus Christ and from others. That's the purpose of it. And so Jesus, of course, sets up his audience this morning when he says, so what do you think the, the owner of the vineyard is going to do to these boys? That's the Father Barnabas translation. Oh, and the people he's talking to, they still, it still hadn't dawned on them yet. He, he's talking about them. 
the people he's talking to, oh, he's going to put those dirty wretches to a, to a, to a violent end. He's going he's to rub them out. Well, haven't you read the scriptures? The stone rejected by the builders has become the chief cornerstone. And then he ends this whole story with the most unusual and weirdest phrase you've ever heard in your life. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Why does the Lord end this phrase, this passage this way? Because, brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ understands that you, if you are ever going to be from the narcissistic self-centeredness that life is meant to make you happy or that you can identify as whatever you want to, a toaster or whatever you want to do, that you can somehow create reality for yourself. If you're ever going to escape, folks, agree with me, disagree with me, fuss at me, be upset with me, do whatever, everything you want, but I'm right. I'm right. You are going to remain a slave to the delusions of your self-centeredness until you come to grips with what the church is. The church is the body of Christ designed to heal us all from the spiritual delusions that keep us separated from each other and separated from God. Why do you think we make the sign of the cross this way? Because God wants to be with you and he wants you to be with each other. Why do you think we do all this physical stuff? So that you'll learn in every possible way you can learn. That you're meant to be whole. You're not meant to be divided. You're not meant to cubby hole your life. I feel very strongly about this this morning, precious angels, because I see so much suffering in the world based on this delusion. Based on this insanity. And here in this building is every tool, every spiritual and even physical tool you will ever need to combat the insanity of your day so that you can be healed, so that you can be in communion. In just a minute, we're going to bring the chalice out. Bread and wine are going to be together. And we are going to physically partake of the body and blood of Jesus Christ as a family meant to bring us into unity together. God is going to take our gifts and He's not going to keep them. By the way, you know God doesn't need bread and wine, right? He's not hungry or thirsty. God is going to take the gifts we give Him. He's going to fill them up with Himself and then He's going to give them back to us as real food and real drink so that we can be together. Let us love one another, I will say. So that with one mind we may confess, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is orthodoxy, my angels. Don't settle for anything less. Amen. Father Barnabas is the priest at the Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene Greek Orthodox Church in Cumming, Georgia. Find out more at faithencouraged.org. That's faithencouraged.org.